Okay, if you are just seeing this video for the first time, I will urge you to look through my other videos that I've made previously on this topic. Now I carried out the experiment and I will arrive at these results as our value that we have obtained from those uh, from the experiment. But into this class, I am going to show you how to manipulate your ways without using carrying out the experiment. The essence of manipulating your result to arrive at your answer is that it makes you it makes it faster for you to get to your result and it gives you better and more accurate results. Now, follow me. I know that you are familiar with this equation. T is equal to 2 pi square root of n all over k. This is the equation for the period of oscillation of a spiral spring. This is the period of this is the formula for the period of oscillation. So what I'm going to do is to square both sides. From squaring both sides, this becomes t squared is equal to what? 4 pi squared times n all over what k. Now what do I want to do? I want to look for a value for k. But like simple harmonic motion of a simple pendulum, we know that g is usually 9.8 meters per second. So here, I, you do not know the value for it. So you are going to choose a value for k. Choose a value for k that ranges from, let's say, 21 to 30. When you choose a value for this, you'll be able to evaluate this with the value of k. And what you need to do is just to substitute m, the value of m, into this equation. So I'll, I'll, write, I'll work this out. So I'm going to have t squared is equal to 4 pi squared, 4 pi squared, okay, let me go 4 pi squared, divided by, okay, times n, divided by, so I'll let me choose the value between 21 and 30. Uh, I'll go with 23 point, let's say 23.5. So let me choose 23.5 for my k. So the k that I'm choosing is 23.5. You can choose any values with, between this range it will be okay for you. At the end of your result, when you plot the graph, you are going to have a value that is close to this, if not exactly this. Okay, so I have 23.5 as my case. So I'll just work this out. I'm going to have 4 times pi is 3.14. 3.14. Use 3.14 for pi. Then square it. Divide it by the value of k that you have chosen. 23.5. Five, that's what I'm choosing here. So that gives me 1.6782 continuous. So I'll just take it to, let me take it to three decimal. So I have 1.678n. Now all you have to do is this. Remember in our previous experiment, I used a mass hanger of mass 10 grams. You can use a mass hanger that is equal to 20 grams, that's okay. But do not use a mass hanger that is too large. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw this table again. So I'm going to have M in grams. Then I have a T in seconds. I have T equals T over 20 in seconds. Then I have the last part, T squared in second squared. So what I will just do is this. I'm going to impute these values here, the masses. The masses are 50.0, 70 .0, 90.0, 110.0, 130.0. All you just need to do is to consider the mass here, n. But you have to convert the masses to kilograms. The mass must be in kilograms. So, but consider, you have to consider the mass hanger that you are using. Here, I'm considering that I'm using a mass hanger of 10. So, the total mass on the spring should be what? 50 times I plus 10, which is equal to what? 60. Then, I'll divide 60 by 100. 
okay, I'll divide 60 by one by 1,000 rather. So that gives me 0 0.06 kilogram. So the masses must be in kilogram. You know that the, all of this, this equation you are writing with the pencil, so near maybe be at the back of your answer book so that you can erase it later. But you have to convert, you can easily do the conversion from your note, from your answer booklet. So I have 0 0.6. So what I'm do, going to do is to what? 1.678 and multiply by 0 0.06. So I have 1.678 times 0 0.06. So that's going to give me 0 0.10. So what I'm going to have for t squared is what I'm going to have 0. 0 0.1006. That's what I have here, but I can just approve it to three decimal places. Now you see this. So I will not get t. How do I get t? I'll take the square root of this number. So I'm going to write square root of 0 0.101. That gives me 0 0.3178. Three decimal places. So I'm going to write 0 0.318. So I'm going to move, now to get t, I'm going to multiply this by 20. So I'm doing 20 times 0 0.318. 20 times 0.318. So that gives me 6.36 seconds. Now you see what I'm doing? I'm working it from the answer backward. So this is going to be faster. All you just need to do is to do this. You can, before you get to the exam, you can even work this one down and put it at the back of your in the back of your head, when you go to the exam, you're just squatting the masses, it's so it becomes faster for you. Now for this, I'll ask the mass of my hunger. I said, like I said, you can use this or this as your mass hunger. But me, I'm using this. If you're using this, stick with it. If you're using this, you also have to stick with it. So 70 plus 10 is 80. When I divide 80 by 1,000, I'm going to get 0 0.06. So I'm going to have 1.678 times 0 0.018. So 1.678 times 0 0.08. That gives me 0 0.3142 something. So I'll leave it to three them. 0, 0 0.134. So to get this, I'll take the square root of this, the square root of 0 0.134. So let me take the square root of that. Square root So that gives me 0.3366. 0 0.366. Now to get this, I multiply this by 20 times 20. That gives me 7.33. 7.33. As easy as that. To get the other one, I'm going to add 10 to this. That makes it 100. 1,000 divided by 100, or 100 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.1. I will multiply it by this, and that will give me what? 0 0.1678. So I have to run it up to three decimal So I have 0 0.168. 0 0.168. So I'll take the square root of this. Square root of 0.168. So that's going to give me 0 0.4098. So that would be much more like 0 0.410. So I'll multiply this by 20. To get this, so I have a point four one times twenty. So that's going to give me eight point two. But I have to add zero to this so that all of this will be in two decimal places. Then I'll do it for one ten again. I'll add ten to one ten. That gives me one twenty. One twenty divided by one thousand. That gives me zero point one two. Zero point one two times one point six seven eight times 1.678, that gives me, oh, 0 0.12 times 1.678, that gives me 0 0.201, 0 0.201. So I'll take the square root of this again, square root of 0.201, that gives me 0 0.448, 0 0.448. So I'll multiply this by 20 to get T. 0.4448 times 20, that gives me 8.96, 8.96.
So for the last one, I add 10 to the that's 140. 140 divided by 100 is equal to 0 0.14 times 1.678 times 1.678. So that gives me 0 0.23, 0 0.235. So I'm going to, I'll take the square root of that, square root of 0.235. That gives me 0 0.485. 0 0.485. Then I'll multiply this by 20 to get this. 0 0.485 times 20. That gives me 9.7. So I add to add 0 to it. So that all of them will be two decimal places. So this is how to obtain your readings without having out the practical. You see that this is very much, much faster. When I carried out the experiment in the previous video, it was difficult for me to even get the vibration because it was vibrating very fast or oscillating very fast. So with this, you will be able to what, get your reading. Now, someone will tell me that the readings here are different from this. Why are they different? Now, what I have done is this. Here, I do not know the spring balance or the spring constant, rather. So the spring constant is definitely different from the spring constant that I used here.